This video introduces is some of the common terminology used for wireless channel models. A wireless channel is a medium from a transmitter to receiver. Assuming there is only one transmitter, the received signal by the receiver would be channel multiplied by the transmitted signal plus noise. The noise is the unwanted electrical disturbance from the receiver hardware. Now, imagine an empty space with only one transmitter and receiver, and no surrounding objects. Next, make a wild imagination that both the transmitter and the receiver are at the same location in this empty space. In this ideal scenario, the receiver receives the same power as the transmitter sends, along with some noise. That is, channel is one in this scenario. This type of channel is called a WGN channel. Next, assume that the receiver is at a distance from the transmitter. Then the channel is determined by the distance. Higher the distance, lower the channel value. If there are objects along the signal propagation path, then the received signal gets attenuated further, that is, the channel value decreases. The attenuation factor is determined by the objects along the propagation path. Also, depending upon the type of blocking object, this loss is called either penetration loss or shadow loss. The penetration loss is same for all distances, while shadow loss may vary with respect to distance. Note that there can be multiple objects along the signal path, in which case, the channel would get attenuated by the sum of all the losses. This type of channel is called slow varying frequency flat fading channel. If there are surrounding objects, there can be multiple signal paths due to reflection, diffraction, or scattering. The direct path is called line of sight path, while all other paths are called non-line of sight path. Each of these signal propagation paths can face different attenuation and delays. At the receiver, the signals from these multiple paths can get added constructively if they are phase aligned or destructively if they are misaligned in phase. Note that in this scenario, a small variation in distance can cause constructive or destructive additions of signals. So the channel can vary significantly even for a small distance. This channel can be modeled as a summation of large-scale fading channel and small-scale fading channel. Large-scale fading channel is basically path loss, penetration loss, and shadow loss. Therefore, it varies only over a relatively large distance. On the other hand, the small-scale fading channel includes effects due to multipaths and movements of objects. Therefore, it fluctuates around zero over small distances. Similarly, if we change the frequency of the signal, the signals can get added constructively or destructively. This causes channel variation along the frequency dimension also. Therefore, this type of channel is called slow varying frequency selective fading channel. Slow varying because the channel doesn't vary with respect to time, since none of the objects are moving here. Frequency selective because the channel varies with respect to frequency. If transmitter or receiver or surrounding objects are moving, then the received signal strength can vary. That is, the channel becomes time varying. This type of channel is called fast varying frequency selective fading channel. Additionally, the movement of objects also causes Doppler spread. That is, the receiver gets signals with a range of frequencies different from the transmitted frequency. In summary, the channel can be classified based on its variations along time and frequency. The slow varying component in channel is caused by path loss, shadow loss or penetration loss. The frequency variation in channel is caused by multipaths. Similarly, the time variation in channel is due to movements of transmitter, receiver, or surrounding objects. As a caveat, these are not clear-cut definitions. For example, 
If frequency variation is low compared to signal bandwidth, then the channel is still called frequency flat fading because the channel is flat across the frequency spectrum used for the transmission and reception. I hope this video helps you to get a basic understanding of wireless channel. For the sake of simplicity, I have omitted many details here. For more details, please go through the references listed in the description below. Thank you for watching.